back guys to Adventures with Rosie. Uh, if you are new to this channel, we just got back from a six week RV holiday in America. We cruised around California, went up to San Francisco, Yosemite, Vegas, all over the show. Went to a bunch of national parks in Utah. Um, so there's about 10 videos in that series. I'll link them below. Um, so yeah, if you want to check out those, links below. We just thought we'd do a quick video and give our thoughts and opinions on the uh, RV we hired, which was the Cruise America C25 Standard. So we're going to break this review down into three categories. We're going to talk about the vehicle itself, the C25 Standard, and the the uh, Ford F450 chassis that it sat on. Um, the layout of the motorhome as well, which we think is quite important. Yeah, especially if you're spending quite a bit of time in it and traveling around for a while. Mm, definitely, especially if you've got considerations like car seats or other adults. Um, then the last thing we're going to talk about is the overall presentation of the motorhome, how we found it, cleanliness, wear and tear, the age of the vehicle, and just some other thoughts around that. So we hired the Cruise America C25 Standard, which is a standard their standard length motorhome there's two shorter versions and then a longer version it was about 21 22 feet i think seven and a half meters something like that it's a little bit longer than our rosie here it was a quite a bit wider eight um it gave us a little bit more room inside but we definitely felt it when we were driving it was a little bit wider than than rosie is um but then in saying that the motorhomes over there are huge the us having that standard size motorhome while it felt big to us we were just dwarfed there when we drove um, trucks would be, you know, there were huge motorhomes over there, They're absolutely crazy. So you're not going to have any problems driving anywhere. Um, you're not going to have any problems getting into um, RV sites. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the size is, is a bit irrelevant. The one time for us is we went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium and Monterey looked like it was nearly impossible to park motorhomes in. And we found a car park that you could pay, it was twenty dollars or something to park there but it only allowed our size or smaller so um i think if we had a bigger motorhome in that situation some of the car parks would have been a bit trickier um but just day trips when we're out and about yeah. in the towns and cities it's it's tricky to park when you're in rv parks overnight it's not an issue but if you're heading out during the day and actually wanting to go somewhere and see things in towns it can get pretty annoying to park yeah so I mean, overall the length we kind of figured that was as much as we needed. Um, uh, you, could, you know, we could have gone much longer if there were two adults, like two families, and obviously we'd have to go up to the next size. The engine and the the actual motorhome itself was nice to drive. Uh, it was a Ford F four fifty from memory, big V eight in it, a lot more power than Rosie has. Um, used a lot more gas than Rosie does, but gas was a bit cheaper in America, so it wasn't. It wasn't too bad. Had cruise control, air conditioning, 50 cup holders, you know, it was nice to drive. Um, so no no issues there, sat nicely at the speed limit um, without any issues. Um, the other good thing about the vehicle was uh, it had quite large tanks, large freshwater, large grey water tanks, um, sort of like, I think it had 150 litre tanks, 200 litre tanks, so um, we could kind of go off grid, but it probably wasn't really relevant to us because every sort of second or third night we were staying in a campground so we we're filling our tanks emptying our other tanks so it wasn't it wasn't too much of a, a an issue and most of the campgrounds over there have full connections as well so you plug straight into the water supply and you can plug your um, black water straight in as well so you're not having to worry about dumping your tanks afterwards which is nice the layout of the RV was really interesting. Um, it was a little bit tricky for the three of us, um, having Harvey obviously complicated things a wee bit. Um, so there was the Luton bed up the top of the cab, um, which didn't have a net. Um, we have a net up there in Rosie, which makes it a bit easier if we're sleeping up there with Harvey. We're not going to roll out in the middle of the night or he's not going to roll out. So it's that little bit of peace of mind. Um, and also, had a bed down the back and both beds were considerably smaller than the ones in Rosie so we actually found that I mean in Rosie the three of us sleep in the Luton bed quite comfortably it's a large king um, and in the RV they were both of them were double so it was wasn't really practical for the three of us to be in a bed um, so Harvey and I slept down the back and Bronson slept up the top for most of the trip so other than the um 
the kind of issue with the bed. I mean, we ended up just kind of one of us to sleep up the top, one of us to sleep down the back. So it was a bit, yeah, we, we had, I mean, we just had to do that. It was more comfortable. Otherwise, the three of us were just side by side. Um, we weren't really expecting that. We were thinking they were quite big beds. The the ones in, in New Zealand, these motorhomes, the lounge areas typically make a queen size bed or a king size bed. So you can kind of pile a couple of people and a kid in there. So, um, other than that, fridge freezer, awesome big fridge and freezer, like you know the same size as the one in your house. Separate shower, um, separate, you know, from the toilet. Uh, even though we didn't use the shower, we didn't. No, we just used showers at the campgrounds. Yeah, um, that was a bit, a bit easier to do that. Uh, and loads of storage, so it had lots of storage in the back. Um, you could put suitcases in the back, that sort of thing. So it, it didn't really have a lounge area. It had just had the dining table with mm. two bench seats either side. Um, so it wasn't super comfortable to hang out in during the day if you had bad weather or anything like that. was stuck inside. Um, but it was fine. It was. It did the job. So the third and final category is the overall presentation and a few of our thoughts on the motorhome. Uh, like I said at the top, we've hired a few motorhomes in New Zealand before from different companies, different shapes and sizes. So we kind of thought we knew what we were, you know, to expect. Um, the main thing for us with this motorhome was it was just grubby. It, the the thing was so dirty when we hopped in. It looked like it hadn't been swept out. Um, you could see where benches just hadn't been wiped down. Things were sticky. Um, we walked around without shoes on in the first five minutes, and our feet were just black. Harvey was crawling around. He had black all over his arms yeah. and hands and so it was a bit of a, a, a buzzkill because the first thing we did is we pulled off the highway and we went to a Walmart and we bought a bunch of cleaning supplies and you know we spent a couple hours cleaning it so it was kind of it was a bit of a dampener I think we're not really sure why well, what we think happened is you're responsible for cleaning it when you return it which isn't the case in New Zealand you return it and they clean it for you mm. whereas in this case you have to clean it or you get stung with a cleaning fee um, so what we're thinking is people just do the bare minimum so they don't have to pay the fee um, and then it gets passed on to the next person so it's not ideal but yeah. so let's talk <coughs> optional extras for a second so there's a yeah. few things that you, there are optional extras there's four things um, the first thing is the miles. So you're going to pay for your miles like you do for a hire car or anything else for the miles you drive. When you hire one from Cruise America, you can pay per mile or you can buy blocks of miles, 500, say 500 miles, which is a lot cheaper. So we worked out on Google Maps all the places we were going to travel, came out to like 1800 miles or something like that. So we bought four blocks of 500. So we had 2000 miles up our sleeve. It also helps you. I guess budget for how far you're going to travel. Mm -hmm. So maybe figure it out, add 10%, you know, for back and forth or whatever, and then uh, you figure out how far you're going to drive because that's uh, that's going to be the cheap way to do it by those blocks and miles. The second thing was the camping chairs. Um, when you're at the checkout picking it up, they'll go, hey, you can hire a couple camping chairs if you want, $10 each or something. We never used them. We hired them, we put them in, we never used them because every campground we went to, had a picnic table outside for every site <laughs> for every site had its own picnic table so we never ever used the camping chairs um so you could save yourself 10 bucks per person there i think the personal kits that we hired were about 50 us dollars per person um mm. so they included a pillow a blanket a sheet a pillowcase a towel, towel a face cloth I think that might have been it. That was it, yeah. Um, so what we discovered is that the blanket was very, very thin. It might have, might as well have just been a sheet. Um, the sheet itself wasn't fitted, so when you're sleeping on a nice vinyl mattress and your sheet comes off in the middle of the night and it's stinking hot, you wake up with your skin <laughs> stuck to the mattress, which yeah. isn't very nice. Um, and there were stains all over the sheets. Um, the pillows were pretty much just little square cushions. Um, and the lumpiest square cushions <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, um, so basically that was day two on our trip was going to Walmart again to yeah. get sheets and blankets um, to last us through the trip. A couple of the nights we, we stayed at places that were really high elevations um, and things got really cold at night so we mm. were glad we picked up those extra blankets and having sheets that actually stayed on the bed when you're in it for a long period of time 
you want to be comfortable so yeah i think if you've got the room definitely bring your sleeping bags with you or, or you know if you're coming from obviously we were traveling 12 hours on a plane to get there so we with a car seat and a push chair and a child so we didn't have room for sleeping bags and that sort of thing but we had to go to walmart probably you know we bought a couple of blankets each and a couple of pillows and sheets so we probably spent the best part of a hundred dollars at walmart on cleaning supplies and then you know that again on oh sorry you know and then including sheets as well so um it would have worked out about the same i think oh as, yeah as definitely paying for their personal kits that we didn't end up using mm. and i mean at the end of it we just washed everything and passed it off to a homeless person that yeah. we saw near where we were dropping off the rv so uh, i definitely would advise against hiring the personal kits i just didn't think they were worth it yeah the other kit you could hire what they call the vehicle provisioning kit and that was a hundred dollars per vehicle um and that had your plates you know pots pans knives cups kettle. plates the kettle so it seems steep a lot of the stuff we got was brand new so i'm not sure if they give everyone new stuff all the time mm. um it was kind of odd because our plates were like cracked and a bit broken and our mugs were all cracked but then we had like brand new pots and pans and and that sort of thing so i think if you're going to do a lot of cooking um we obviously a night staying at campgrounds or you know boondocking and, and and state parks and that sort of thing we um did a lot of cooking so that was quite good mm. for us um otherwise you'd end up with all the stuff at the end of it that you've got to throw out or pass on or give to an opportunity shop or something so yeah the, the kits seem expensive for what they are um, and they're obviously an added cost so you've got a budget for that mm -hmm. we probably in hindsight i didn't really look around at other motorhome places the first one i searched was cruise america i looked at the options i was like that looks kind of all right Whoa. another couple we saw were El Monte, I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm saying that correctly, and Road Bear, and they seem to be much newer vehicles. Every time we saw one, we we're like, oh, that looks awesome. Um, they, the overall presentation of them seemed to be a lot nicer yeah. on the road. Um, yeah, I think just the cleanliness and the, the sort of, the presentation of the vehicle was just a bit, um, it just, it left a bit of a sour taste in our mouth. We yeah. felt like it was always a bit untidy, it was always a bit unclean, and having to clean it when we picked it up and then having to clean it again when, when we dropped it off was just a bit like frustrating yeah, <laughs> especially I mean, when they only give you like this rubbish little broom that's the only <laughs> cleaning supplies they give you so you're expected to clean inside and out this rv when you return it and you're just given a little broom so, yeah i don't know i mean you pay <laughs> you pay a lot of money to hire them you know at the end of the day mm. so you kind of expect those things i think Unlike New Zealand, there's a, a much higher volume of, of motorhomes going in and out. Um, you'll see the the three main brands of motorhome everywhere over there mm -hmm. in your travels. And um, yeah, so I mean, overall, do your research, um, look at reviews for those those other companies, compare prices. You know, you might spend a bit more to have a slightly newer model. It, it also can be a bit of a luck of the draw because there were some newer ones. Mm -hmm and some older years of, of motorhomes so you can't you can never guarantee what you're going to get on the day i suppose um we got an old one it was a bit run down a bit broken and uh <laughs> and pretty dirty um thanks for watching guys like i said we are uh based in new zealand we have a motorhome here uh, called rosie we we are going to hit the the summer pretty hard hit the road we've got tons of adventures um tons of cool vlogs coming up so um if you're interested in that sort of thing whack a subscribe down the bottom and um and yeah leave a comment if you've had an experience with hiring a motorhome or things we should have done differently yeah uh, if you want to check out the america playlist and see some of the cool places some of the national parks we visited were just incredible uh, mm -hmm. we come from a pretty beautiful country but we were blown away by some of the places like yeah. zion and yosemite and those national parks so um check those out below and thanks for stopping by. Thank you.